Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing great today. Uh, today we're back in Deus Ex and we are currently back in Detroit for the second time around and we are about to go into the hotel to find the PI that Pritchard pointed us towards and maybe find some dirt on Seraph, so I'm quite excited. There's of course another mission to actually find the assistant that the we were targeting, but for now, I am super excited about that PI, so that's what we're going to start with. Anyway, let's get into it. All right, here we are. So let's figure out where we need to go. Um, there's those two hotels should be right there. So let me see. There is one, but the one that I want to go to is a little bit earlier. I think it should be this one. I'm fairly certain. So let's head over that way. Okay, so here we are. We need to get up to that apartment over there. And conveniently, there is a ladder. Okay. Alright, one more up. Can I... I can get into this window, but I want to see if there's another one. There is. Okay, good. And no one. That's good. No one here, but... There's a person there. In here? Is he facing this way? That sucks. Where is he? Oh, behind. Oh, oh. If you wouldn't mind tidying up a little. If you don't shut up, I'm going to put another bullet in you. Yeah, real tough guy. Five on one and you still... And to shoot me. Piece of shit. Just hope they find what we're looking for, for your sake. <laughs> they won't, because I gave them the wrong code. Yeah, that's right. Asshole. What now, tough guy? You gonna shoot me? Again? We have ways of getting around security. How do you think we got into this shithole? First, you break in. Shoot me in the gut. Tear the place up. And now you insult my digs? That's cold. Man. But please shut up. And you better plan on replacing my rug. That one really tied the room together. <laughs> All right. Then. You saw nothing. This is pointless, what I'm doing, I imagine. But that's okay. Trauma kit. This guy needs it. Oh, did I get stuck? Alright, my guy. Who are you? Brent Radford. Ooh, ooh, that must be the guy. Um, let's do this. Jensen! Oh, Christ! Brent Radford? In the flesh. For now. How do you know my name? 
What happened here? Answers for favors. There's a, a trauma kit I keep somewhere around here. Find it. You need a doctor. I'll get help. No. No time. The, they could be back. Any minute. Find the kit quickly. If you want answers. Okay, fair enough. Uh, details. I ain't talking with, without something to kill the pain, asshole. All right, fine, fine. I'll be back. Let's maybe close this door too. Though the trauma kit. There you are. Did you find the kit? Oh, sweet Jesus, the pain. Morphine. Apply. This should help with the pain. Now tell me what's going on. Those sons of bitches. I should have seen it coming. I knew from the moment Sarif got spooked that, that this case would come back and bite me in the ass. Sarif. So you're the investigator he hired to run a background check on me? Detective. Or I was. Until... Christ, fuck it. It hurts enough just trying to... Breathe. Point is, the goons that did this to me, professionals. I think your boss pissed off the wrong people trying to dig up your dirt. What people? What did you find? No time to, to go into details. My storage unit, the sons of bitches, they're headed there now. Sarif had me uncover a ton of shit on you. Stuff even you don't... You don't know. Your parents, your your real parents. The tests, the fire. What are you, Jensen? Some kind of freak? Focus, Radford. I put it all. I mothballed the case in storage. It's in an alley. Behind the bank. Your files are there. But Michelle knows. Michelle knows more. You need to stop. You need to stop them. Ooh, so he's digging up stuff about me, unsurprising. Fuck, you, robot. This, this is all your fault. Give me, give me another shot. Morphine, or go fuck yourself. Is he gonna overdose if I keep asking? Focus, Radford. Ah, that hit the spot. I think I could get used to this stuff. That's the theory. Hey, I'm feeling a little more talkative. Already. Robot. Okay. Alright, let's do Seraph. Why did Seraph stop the investigation? You said he was spooked. What spooked him? You wouldn't believe me even if I told you. Oh, hell, even I don't. I still don't believe it. You believe in ghosts, Jensen? Seraph was spooked by ghosts. Close enough. Illuminati. <laughs> Conspiracies, theories, it's all bullshit. But you stink of it, Jensen. Enough to have your boss, one of the most powerful men in the world, look away. <clears throat> You're a ghost. A fucking tragedy. Everything you touch, everything that touches you, dies. I mean, yeah? You mentioned someone named Michelle. Who's Michelle? Uh, your guardian angel. Who is she? Tell me. Do robots believe... Do robots even believe in angels? Or did they take that out of you? Did they take that away? You know, your soul. When they built you. <laughs> Tell me, what was it like when you died, Jensen? I know you're in a lot of pain, and the morphine is... Just find her before they do. You, you owe her that much. You can say who she is. That would be nice. Who did this to you? Guys in suits. One of them, David or Daniel, something like that. British accent. He was in charge. Talked about a Mr. Mr. Gray. They were in a, a hurry. Four of them. Not counting the one they left behind. 
well-armed, disciplined. I, I didn't stand a chance. Maybe that metal corpse you call a body will do better than mine did. What were they looking for? You robot. They wanted my information on you. Someone powerful has their eyes on you and is very interested in your past. Mr. Gray, how ironic. All right, task. Radford, I know you're in a lot of pain, but it's important you give me as many details as you can. There's a storage unit in the alley next to the bank near the police department. Okay. That's where the suits are headed. I tried, didn't give them anything. There's a safe. It has what you want. It'll get you to her. Ah. It'll lead you to her, to Michelle, the safe. They don't have the, the right combination. Four, Four, zero, six, two. Two. Remember. Okay. Good. I don't need your reward. I'm We're leaving. done. But I'll call in an ambulance. You'll be okay. No. Those fucking animals. I... I can't move anything. I was turning around, pulling my gun when... When the first bullet hit me. The second one. They... They fucking... Pa paralyzed me. I'm sure it's not as bad as you think. It might be a reaction to the morphine. I know what morphine does. I also know... What a 9 millimeter round fired at less than 10 meters does to the thoracic vertebrae on impact. You need a doctor. They can fix that. I ain't turning into no freak. Even if I could afford the surgery, the augments, I'd rather die than be half a machine. And I sure as hell ain't gonna live the rest of my life in a wheelchair, shitting in a goddamn diaper. Radford. Listen. I know there's still a few more morphine shots. Another two should should do the trick. Please, this is as close as I'm gonna get to begging you. Don't leave me like this. You owe me that much. Man. Why do you hate augmentation so much? Because it ain't right. You can't, you can't go changing the way things are. You can't replace the real thing with an, an imitation. It ain't right. It ain't natural. It can save your life. No, you lose more than what gets left behind in the chopping block. You should know this by now. Hmm. I don't know what to say. I can see both points. I'm going to be honest. I don't want him to die, but he does. I guess ultimately it's his decision, but... Uh, let's see how this goes, okay? Neither is suicide. Don't you fucking judge me, robot. You don't know what... I've been through. Come on. This should be easy for you. I know Saraf didn't put blades in those in those arms just so you could trim the hedges. <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> oh man. Is this what you really want? Does a bear pope in the woods? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I fucked that one up. Listen, robot. If I could do it myself, I would. I got no family left. No one left to mourn. It's for the best. I ain't gonna be no burden on society. Last chance, Brent. Just fucking do it. I feel horrible. It'll be quick. I know. You... you did a good thing. Here. The ones that did this. I'll find them. Look at you. An iron... G -g giant... with a heart... 
gold. But, but, but don't do, do it for me. Do, do, do it for her. For M M M Michelle. You owe her. Here. Yeah. Life. That's awful. How rude is it to search the guy you just assisted in suicide? Shit. <laughs> okay. Well, we're a heartless robot, aren't we? Hello, Mr. Radford. I am contacting you in regards to your u Strolt storage unit. C509, in order to remind you of the upcoming lease renewal payment. You recently inquired about pre-approved credit plans, and we would like to follow up on some accounting matters. Please respond at your nearest convenience so we may discuss your option further. So he was out of money too. Okay. Well, I guess he wasn't joking about not being able to afford it. Man, that's sad. Poor guy. I don't know if he deserved it or not. No one truly probably does. But that is sad. Hey, I can lift the fridge now. That's cool. Well... Oh, hello there! I think I've been to this place already, haven't I? Yeah, that's right. This is that other place that I... I was tasked to investigate. Well, now it's got a hole in the wall. Right, so, moving on. Pritchard. I located Radford. He was attacked by men in suits. Private security, secret service types. I'm going after them. What about Radford? Did you get anything out of him? He didn't make it. There was nothing I could do. Right, I'll call it in. You have a new lead, at least? Yeah, I'm on my way there now. I'll contact you when I have more. I find it curious that he didn't actually answer his question. Like, did you get anything out of him? He didn't make it. We don't trust. We don't trust at all. Oh, I think I remember the storage unit. I was passing by it. Yeah. Come on, you can do it. Oh, there we go. Can I just, uh, crush him with a box? I don't necessarily want to kill them, but I kind of do. Let's see. What do we have for darts? No. <laughs> there we go. was the wrong move. Huh? Did you hear me? Of course he is. I know Mr. Dutton. Mr. Gray is landed tonight. We're working on it, yeah. Listen, believe me, we tried. The old man proved resilient. We left someone behind to watch him. If we need, we can go back, but I'm not sure how much more he can take. That's why we need Smith. Smith? Who's the Mr. Da? We tried that already. Look, he can't get the safe open. That's why if you could, send Smith down. Right. Wait, who do we have who could be a Mr. Da?
about that. Jack O'Malley. Sam fucked up. Let's see. Tenants. Um. Mr. Winchester. Danny. No, there's that's not it. The Masirov headquarters. No. I wanted to uh, see the ones that are from the convention center. Maybe they would be in the end. Taggart. Okay, so he's definitely not a duh. Ole Strice. Also not a duh. The only duh I can think of is Hugh Darrow. But he's he hasn't been present at all yet. I don't know. Thank you, sir. Now we'll contact you as soon as we have the information. Is he gonna go? <laughs> He's looking right at me. That's fun. Alright, let's assess. What do we have here? So I see three guys. Oh, God. Shit. Okay, then. All right, sir. You're coming with me. Hey. Rude. There you go. Oh. Damn. That's quite rude as well. Okay. Mr. Gray's itinerary. Stevens, I'm forwarding you a copy of Mr. Gray's travel itinerary. It's imperative you extract the information concerning his interests with the utmost discretion. We can't afford to tip off the target or Seraph. I trust you'll exercise due diligence on this matter and be done before Mr. Gray reaches Detroit. Hmm. Wimbledon Bridge House. Hartfield Road. In London. Okay. Booked by... I'm guessing the number of X's are not gonna tip me off on anything. Ah, uh, maybe. This would match to the Hugh Darrow part. If you need anything, you know where to reach me. So let's see. Acquaintances forgotten. I found Redford's storage unit. It's crawling with guys in black suits. They must be the ones that attacked him. I'll need to eliminate them. And no additional objectives that I can see. Come on. Alright, no one else is coming. That's good. Alright, we have another dude that's behind. Let's see if I can crawl towards him, because he's facing the other way. But, on that note... I might just eliminate these two. Ooh. Let's see. Let's see if he sees me. Okay, he did not see me. That's good. That is very good. Aha! I will never get over this. Okay. Is there anyone 
Okay, there could be people. Should I just stash them or should I just leave them? I think I should leave them. Okay, we got a computer. Pack. That's not bad. Access granted. Woo! Okay. Oh gosh. <laughs> All right, Veronica. New lead, Michelle Walters. A B. Got a tip for you on that case you're working. There is a woman named Michelle Walters. She works at that lab you mentioned, White Helix. She was a nurse and good friends with the Jensen's, particularly Arthur. She's living in Detroit now on Brooklyn Court. There's just one problem. According to my initial probes, she's senile. But you always had a way with the ladies. Maybe you can coax some information from her. V. Arthur. Wait. Arthur, okay. Radford, no wait. Let's start from the beginning. All right, Brent from Lucius. It wasn't easy, but I finally backtraced some of Margie and Arthur Jensen's past through their medical files. Arthur Jensen had enough connections through his old Desert Storm buddies turned security consultants <laughs> uh, to have certain records pulled, which is why the family is a ghost. But we couldn't find Margie's records. For a period of eight years, Arthur relied on the insurance policy of his then employer, White Helix Labs, to pay for his wife's medication. She was on antidepressants since 14 and needed regular prescriptions. When White Helix Labs burnt down, all its files and employment records were lost and the Jensen stayed invisible, mostly. Did they burn it down to cover their tracks? That would be kind of curious. Here's the thing. One minute, Adam doesn't exist, and the next, the Jensen's have themselves a bouncing and healthy five-year-old. That's when they pull their vanishing act, so on a hunch, I sniffed around some more, and sure enough, the Jensen's had tried adopting kids from several Michigan agencies, but Margie was deemed unfit as a parent. Next thing you know, they have Adam. There's no real trail saying how he was placed in their hands. Hope that helps. Lucius. D. No, wait, you wrote. I thought this was pretty interesting. I'm going to start digging around for some more info on this White Helix Labs. It could lead to a big break in the case behind our mysterious boy wonder. Radfort, I strongly advise you not to. I've heard enough, and I have nothing to do I will have nothing to do with White Helix. The less I know, the better, and I would advise you to follow suit. In fact, I consider your contractual obligations fulfilled. This investigation is over. I'll get in touch to organize the rendering and payment of bills for your service. Interesting. You wrote... Oh, there's more. I had a friend at the gin... Gene View? Gene View Labs? Run the test off the record like you asked. Does your subject know that neither of his parents are his birth parents? That surprised me. The mother was sterile, according to those old me medical records I dug up, but his dad carries no common phenotypes either. See for yourself. Mother Margie? Arthur? Genetic Systems Tested Parentage Index. I know nothing about all of this. I'm guessing this is the commonality. Thanks, keep digging. Ooh, that's another big one. I like it. From... Oh, two. M. Reed. Interesting. From Rebecca Downey. Paternity test. Hey, Megan. I know you had some questions about the files I sent. Sorry about the graphs earlier. 
but that sample was nothing short of groundbreaking and I got excited. I don't suppose you could tell me where you got it. The short answer to the original breakdown I sent is this. Yes. The DNA samples are remarkable and we were unbelievably lucky to catch the reason why. We've been working with Versa Life, new chaos model genome matrix, which is trying to apply fractal mathematics to the study of genetic mutation. In essence, we've been trying to predict the future of human evolution using past mutations stored in a database of our mitochondria, <laughs> which has passed uninterrupted from ancestral Eve through our mothers. It gives us an accurate and universal roadmap for our common past. The thing is, the sample you sent fits one of our evolutionary models of the future. What? We're talking about someone who is ahead of the genetic curves by one step, maybe two. Do you know what this could mean for medicine alone? You have a living, breathing Nobel Prize on your hands. The thing is, I can't tell you if this is a natural leap in evolution or something done to the matter while the baby was in vitro. But I do know that this person's mother had no such mutations. The mitochondria doesn't lie. Rebecca. Were we grown in a tank? Is that what it is? Radford, here's a little nugget I gleaned off the PC of your man's bow, or expo. I was hoping to get more, but some nuclear snake was hounding my trace, and I had to jump networks. When I tried to reconnect, my tunnel was caved. Whoever that was, they're good. I'm not gonna risk going back in anytime soon. P.S. Consider my debt paid. This is the last time I do a job without the money up front. Uh, there's no... No, wait. Zero cool. Okay, got it. So this is the last one. Mr. Serif, I found Adam Jensen's psych evaluation following the SWAT incident with the augmented teen. I managed to sneak a look at the folder, but I couldn't copy it. At least not yet. I'll be honest with you, the psych eval doesn't paint a pretty picture. It mentions the problems with authority figures, a disregard for the chain of command, anger management issues, and potential PTSD. Here's the thing. When you hired me, you said you wanted me to read between the lines. So here it is. The evaluation reads like fiction. I'm thinking a pissed off superior wanted Jensen off the force and had the evaluation worded to read like just cause. But most of the rank and file I spoke to respected and liked Jensen. I remember reading this before. They thought he was a real straight shooter, even though the SWAT incident soured his reputation a little. Still, even my source liked him enough to want to keep his psych eval buried. Or if not this exactly, but something similar about the report. Am I misremembering something? Okay, we got a safe that we have a code for, I believe. Or do we not? I thought we did. Yeah. Or 062. Okay. Ebook photos. Can I not look at them? These. Examine. A collection of pictures from your childhood. Oh, I was a cute kid. That's nice. All right. Credit chip. Revolver ammo. And a book. Fire destroys white helix labs. Twisted Cedar, Michigan. PNN? What does PNN stand for? Um, at 4.36 a.m. on July 18th, firefighters were called to White Helix Labs to fight an early morning blaze. By the time they arrived, the main building was already engulfed in flames. General Manager Michael Ferris could not be reached for comment, but a pre-recorded message had been left on White Helix's lab's toll-free line, stating that nobody is believed to have been hurt in the fire. 
That message was later removed when firefighters began pulling bodies from the wreckage. The recovery operations are currently ongoing. Fire Chief Minnie Hawkins told reporters, but also stated that the circumstances behind the blaze are very suspicious. White Helix Labs, a subsidiary of VersaLife, is a bioresearch firm studying childhood genetic diseases. Diseases. All right, all right. I stand by my opinion that that fire was uh, probably set off by Jensen's adoptive parents. So we'll see. So what does it want us to do now? I think I found everything there is to find. Now I should look for Michelle Walters and speak with her. Um, Michelle, where are you at? The top floor. Of the same building that I was just in? Or this one? This one or this one? We'll see. No, it says to go to here. Okay. Well, let's go around, perhaps. No, this is a different building. Alright. Don't mind me. <gasps> oh. Oh. How typical of me. All right, let's not misstep this time around. That would help everyone, I think. Okay, we got no one, so that's good. We're going downstairs. All right, Michelle. Got no one else on your on your floor, I don't think. Okay, good. This is open. Hi. I've been to this apartment before. I have. Hello? Did I leave my door open? No. Wait. You're not from Rolling Mills. You're too handsome to be from Rolling Mills. No, I'm not. Mrs. Michelle Walters, is it? My name's Adam Jensen. <laughs> no, no. You much too old to be him. You must be from Rolling Mills. And please, it's Miss Walters. Brent Radford sent me. Do you remember him? He's a detective. Yes, lovely gentleman. He still has my photos of Adam when he was a baby. Oh, could you be a dear and fetch them for me? I forgot who has them, though. So, I'm assuming she's talking about Meals on Wheels. I used to volunteer with them some years back. Are these the photographs? Oh, yes, yes. Thank you. I, I haven't seen Adam Jensen in such a long time. Forever, it seems. Such a happy baby. Aw. Miss Walters. Can you tell me about the boy in those photos? The boy in those photos? Adam. Tragic, really, what happened to his parents. His real parents. His real parents? They died in that fire. Horrible, really. I was there. At least those other cribs were empty. I only had to save Adam. Mrs. Walters, I really need you to focus. What are you talking about? Why, I already told that nice detective all this already. About the experiments and the fire at White Helix Labs. We knew Adam was special. That's why his parents started the fire. So they didn't do the same thing to the next batch of babies. So my... Adam's real parents were trying to protect him. But from what? Why, from the conspiracy, of course. But I've said too much. Would you be a dear now and go fetch my dinner? 
Miss Walters, please. I know it was a while ago, and remembering all the details might be hard, but do you think you can try and focus for a minute? What did you tell the detective? Well, Mr. Radford and I spoke about many, many things. But don't you have meals to deliver? And no, I'm done for the night. Dinner? Okay. I feel like it's a little mean to use the Casey on her, but maybe. Let's try again and see. Miss Walters, please. I know it was a while ago, and remembering all the details okay. might be hard. Well, Mr. Okay. Uh... I think I should be charming. I would love to hear more about the boy in those photographs. Such a polite and handsome young man. It'll be my pleasure. The boy in the photo, Adam. Jensen was never really his last name, you know. We only gave that to him after the fire. Fire? At White Helix Lab. That's where Adam's real parents were. At least I think they were his parents. All those babies, the gene therapy they went through. But Adam, oh, Adam was special. Special? How? He survived what they did to those babies. He was one of a kind. Then, when we heard they were going to use him to inoculate the next batch of infants... Wait, what were they doing to the babies? I wish I could remember. I was just part of a nursing staff. But Adam's parents, they started the fire. Yes, I remember that. They asked me to hide Adam. Then they started to fire. Poor things. They never got out in time. So they started a fire at White Helix Labs. And you hid me. No, not you, dear. Adam Jensen. Or at least I think that was his name. Well, I gave him to the Jensens to raise. They were a lovely couple. Miss Walters, my Adam's real parents. Who were they? I'm sorry. What were we talking about? Oh, when are them Rolling Mills people gonna get here with my dinner? Can I get her dinner so she can keep talking? Miss Walters, please. I well. Okay. Thank you for your time, Miss Walters. Oh, before I forget, if you see Adam, could you please give him this? It's for all the birthdays and Christmases I've missed. I've been saving them. Oh my gosh. I'll make sure he gets it. Thank you, dear. Why, he must be 12 or 13 by now. Make sure he gets something nice. Oh. Let her rest, okay. So let's see what we got here now. I don't think I'll get any more coherent information from Miss Walters. I should go. <laughs> oh man. What did she give me? Hey, I was hoping I would see those Christmas cards. That's kind of a shame. Well, I guess let's look at your other room. Hopefully you're not going to get mad at me. Nothing. Nothing weird in the bathroom. You know they say you're not supposed to put your bed in the corner like that. Apparently it's not good energy. I don't know if I'd buy that, but... It doesn't even look that good. Anyway, let's talk about this mission. Pritchard. I need you to assign a temporary security detail to an apartment on Brooklyn Court until I can figure out a more permanent solution. The woman's name is Walters. Michelle Walters. Security detail? What the hell, Jensen? Who is this woman? She's... family. But she's vulnerable. I'll explain later. Just do this for me, please. And not a word to Seraph. Can I trust you on this, Pritchard? Christ, Jensen. All right, all right. I'll do it. But there better be a damn good reason for this. There is. 
I'll fill you in next time I see you. But right now I need to get back to work. And Pritchard, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Okay. Okay, so we do trust Pritchard. That's interesting. Or trust him enough, I suppose, for this. Okay, so... Now what? Now it's gone. Alright, so, like I said, let's talk about this. So, um... Jensen's aren't our real parents. Got it. Our parents started the fire. I thought Jensen's did. But... That must be... Okay, let me go through my... Through my this. No, wait, Detroit. Uh, emails, okay. So, where is this? Okay, okay, so this is the book that I was looking for. So, Arthur was also working at White Helix. So, Jensen's real parents worked at White Helix as well. So, did they not know his actual parents? Only the nurse did? There's no way. They, they gotta be acquainted. They had to be at least acquainted. Anyway, let's investigate the assistant this time around. How do I get out of this? This way. Gotcha. Um, why do I not fall off the roof? Or fall off successfully, at least. Well, I may have hurt myself, but I didn't die. So that's something. Okay, now I need to go to this building. Hello. How's it going? I'd seen the footage, but that shit could be doctored easily. These people are probably freaking out for nothing. What if it's true? An army of cog soldiers? Detroit will be a police state in no time. Nazism, man, right here in the U.S. of A. Stop jumping to conclusions. Don't be a sheep like the rest of this mob. Goaded on by Taggart and his purest cult. They ain't a cult, man. They just believe in preserving what God gave them. Apparently they don't care about causing millions of dollars in damage to the city. Bunch of opportunists, if you ask me. Yes, I'm listening. You don't need to eye me sideways like that. Hello. Don't mind me. Okay. So... There. I think I need to go to this entrance here. Probably not through here, then. Or do they not mind? <laughs> Let's save. Are they evil? They don't seem to be. Fuck them cops, man. Yeah, they can't tell us to get off the streets. We own these blocks as much as they do. They must have locked up all our brothers. I told you we was living in a police state. This place looks familiar, doesn't it now? I don't know if I'll be able to go to the other side from here, because I'm pretty sure last time I was around, I was on the other building. On top of the other building. Over there. Oh no, I should be able to. <sighs>
There we go. That wasn't terrible. Okay, now let's just pay attention, all right? You sure you closed the door? Yeah, yeah, of course I did. What do you think I am, an idiot? You're not gonna make me answer that, are you? <laughs> Funny. Okay, so we're not alone. It kind of sounds like I hear a mine. I just need to go this way. Okay. Oh, good. Very good. <laughs> Oh, he must be in the other room. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Cool. Oh my god. What the hell? Is that you? Why are you like that? Okay, we messed up. You over there? Is he not looking at me? Keep searching. We're gonna find you, you bastard! I got nothing. What? Hanser's gone. I know he's still here. The hell? Keep looking. Got no honor, man. Keep hiding, Hanser. That's it. He's not here. But stay on it. Just watch for him. Next time we waste him. I got nothing. What? Split. You see anything, you shoot it. What the hell? Easy, he's running. Just make sure you're ready if he comes back. Nothing here. Excuse me? I got fucking coward, he ran! Where are you hiding, asshole? That's it, he's not here. But stay on it. Just watch for him. Next time we waste him. He's not here. What? I am so perplexed. He's not here, but stay on it. Just watch for him. Next time we waste him. I should have probably moved. Okay. Is that my ex-friend? I can't even tell. His name doesn't show up. Um... So... Zeke Sanders, that's him all right. What the hell? He's not my friend anymore, is he? Hello, brother. From Ezekiel. I've had the old safe replaced. It was of poor design and I didn't trust it. 
especially in this area. The new code, the new one's code is 5463. Don't be greedy. So what the hell happened? Okay, okay, okay. I need details. All right. Richard was right. Sandoval left the convention center hours ago. He's got an apartment on Grand River Road, not far from Chiron Building, and I hope to confront him and get answers. I've got to get inside his apartment, where I found Zeke Sanders, my previous friend. I don't quite like it. What is... who is this poor sod? We don't know. I guess I got a Praxis kit out of it. Can I maybe ambush them? They just left. Never mind. Um... Right, so... What are we gonna do with this information? Guess we're gonna close the door. And block it. <laughs> All right. Noisy. Noisy, noisy. That's just the bathroom. You blocked the bathroom. I mean, cool. What do we have here? And is there anyone there? Um, let's see. Two, does it have two? Four? I... I don't think I see any thing. Or anyone. Well, how about we move all of these <laughs> to here? <laughs> oh, hello, that's useful. What are you? Something happened. I don't know where. Nope, come on. There we go. <gasps> what? That's awesome! Holy shit. And we didn't even need to break a Bridget. wall. Looks like Sandoval's got a secret bunker. I'm gonna flush him out. Let's hope he's still there. Let's. I won't hold my breath, though. Oh, good. Not looking my way, though. That's good news. Ah, hello you. How do I get to you? Why do we always get assigned to the shittiest spots? Yeah, why would anyone come down here? I think they're afraid someone's gonna try to sneak a bomb into the doc's locker. I'd be more worried about what's in the doc's head than what's in his locker. <laughs> That's fair. Okay. We hid. Hey, anyone there? Shit. Shit, shit, shit. Wasted my time. No one's here. Okay. Good. Glad you think so.
I must have lended a little too loudly. Okay, you know what? On that note, let's check out what we got in Braxis. We have three available. How about... Sprint faster, jump enhancement. Um... Which one was the one that allowed me to land from further up? This guy? Icarus? I can do that. Good. Energy consumption? None. Just how I like it. Should we just do this? That could be nice. Yeah, let's go for it. Okay. So let's see. Let's assess what we have here. Find and confront Sandoval. Oh. Okay. I basically did like a shortcut situation here. What am I walking on? Oh. Pebbles. Should I sprint? I kind of feel like I should. Let's give it a go. See how it goes. Right. Oh, that's not good. That's not good at all. Ooh, ooh. Okay, there's the central chamber that I've been to a couple times. Okay. You gonna come? There is only three guys that I can see. So that's good news. <laughs> uh, just kidding. <laughs> only three guys. Let's see. So the entrance should be just around the corner. Should I just do the same thing? Maybe. On the other hand, there might be a real nice pocket secretary. A mine. I mean, of course there is a mine. Why wouldn't there be? It's like you want to sneak, you got to deal with the mines. Whoa, I don't see a mine. Maybe it's outside. Not on the ceiling, either. Hmm. Maybe they didn't think to put one in there. Okay, so... I need to make my way over there. Not gonna lie, it's a bit difficult to assess proximity of the guys. Like, for instance, do I try to just get this one? 
not like that. They don't seem to be coming this way, so that's good. I suppose. Can I punch him from Crouch? I wanna see. I don't know what you're talking about. I see nobody. <laughs> hey, Barkley. <laughs> One of your guys tripped the goddamn lasers again. This is not a fucking toy. Here, the code to disable the grid is 8218. Turn it off when these clowns are around. Setting this back up properly is a bitch. There's something going on here. Better stay alert. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe this is this is how it turned out. This is amazing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Guys, don't let me play stealth games, because they turn out ridiculous. Alright, I just waited for them to chill out. But guys, can you imagine the situation from their point of view? They just saw their friend, friend, colleague, get knocked out and then turn around the corner and there's nobody. How does that work? Okay, I don't think they're walking this way. So I'm gonna go. Got it. So this is must be the lasers. Eight, two, one, eight. Are they gonna get alarmed by that? I don't think so. It didn't look like it anyway. Okay, let's keep moving. Where are you, mine? There you are. Can't, can't even get to ya. All right, I have enough frag mines for now. Where's the other one? Maybe that was the other one on the other side then. Gunshots! You've got to help me! You've got to come! There were no gunshots. I'm only gonna ask you this once, Sandoval. Where are the scientists you helped kidnap? I... I don't know! I know all about FEMA and how you removed the GPLs. I didn't! I didn't remove anything! I swear it! The operation was too dangerous! They would have died if I removed them! All I could do was switch them to a lower frequency! Oh! The GPLs are still broadcasting? I don't know. 
Probably. <gasps> well, Sandy, you're gonna help me find out. We're going back to Detroit, where you and I are gonna... Uh. No! Come up! I see you! At all times. I cannot let you leave! Pritchard, get this. The GPLs are still transmitting. Sandoval switched them to a lower frequency. But, but they could be broadcasting anywhere in the world. I don't have the type of equipment we'll need to find them. It's our only lead, Pritchard. You have to do something. I know. Listen, the riot's still blocking the street entrance. Head back to your apartment and Malik will fly you over. Maybe by the time you get here, I'll have figured out something. Okay, then. Oh, hands. No better than this of human augmentation. I find myself returning to a story that touched my life, a story about Ezekiel, a young man torn apart by the trauma of augmentation. A man I was lucky enough to be able to help. Ezekiel was a marine who had been severely wounded in the Gulf. Believing he had something to prove, he asked to be augmented and returned to duty. But when his tour was over, the shock of his changed self sent him into a spiral of despair. He looked for death back home, and there our paths crossed. I was able to turn him around to convince him to have his augmentations removed after recovering in a humanity front clinic. Ezekiel was able to return to the man he'd once been and became a model case for our group's belief. He was truly healed. Oh, oh, was that the same Ezekiel? Uh, Zeke's brother? That Ezekiel? This is Eliza Kassan reporting to you live from Pikes. Practical shootist monthly. What? Okay. Thousands of angry rioters took to the streets in several cities this evening Let's, after listen viewing this. controversial satellite footage uncovered by Pikes. Detroit, Toronto, Mumbai, and Rio de Janeiro all report violent clashes taking place outside the doors of such well-known biotechnology firms as Kusanagi, Isole, and Seraph Industries. The footage sparking the riots appears to show scientists performing crude, torture-like experiments on teams of augmented super soldiers. Just minutes ago, Cao Yun Ru, CEO of the Taiyong Medical Corporation, commented on the images. I want the world to know that we at Taiyong Medical have not and never will condone these experiments. This company prides itself on maintaining a safe environment and an ethical approach to research at all times. We invite critics and members of the UN to tour our facilities firsthand. They will find nothing but order, progress, and moral responsibility. Looks as if the ball is now firmly in the United Nations court. This is Eliza Kassan reporting to you live from Picus. You guys remember the book we found at Taiyang Medical? The one that said something about um, being able to control your uh, organs, I guess, selectively. I... <sighs> I'm probably overthinking this, okay? But I think I'm going to avoid buying Praxis kits and try to rely on the ones that I earn. Maybe find? I don't know. Picking them up or not picking them up is a little too difficult. But I don't think... I'm not gonna buy any. I'm just gonna say that. Because I feel like if they implemented anything that they were writing about, I do not want to be part of it. At least, you know, I did not have a choice in what I currently have, so maybe I can get a choice in what I don't get in the future, if you know what I mean. Where are we? Oh, we just need to get out. Okay. Do we have any mines?
We don't have any mines, but we have this. But I wonder if it's gonna alert the people on the other side here. I don't think it did. Ammo capacity. Uh, what can I use it for? I want to see. Nothing. So we are going to drop it then. In that case. You don't see me. Ladder down. What is this? What are you? I don't like you. Oh. Access granted. Good. Very good. <gasps> oh gosh! <laughs> Can you not, hobo lady, please? Jesus Christ. ended where we basically started. Alright guys, I am going to end this here, and uh, so we got ourselves a situation. We have this lady who used to be a nurse who was helping our real parents and our adoptive parents at the same time, and hopefully Pritchard's security detail is actually going to help save her, because I would feel horrible if she ends up in the crossfire, essentially. So, yeah, uh, I'm curious to see how that shakes out. I would like to find out more about my actual parents. Um, so far, it seems like I've been raised in a tank. So that's exciting. As for the other mission that we did, uh, that one's a curious one as well. I, I'm really intrigued about how this is all going to turn out, because now that we know that those chips are still working in broadcasting, we just need to figure out where or narrow down the, I guess, the closer radius so we can actually figure out and zero in on the signal. And that seems a lot more hopeful than just assuming that there could be anywhere and there's nothing to help us unless we find out who are the right people. And I'm also curious about that conversation that we heard about the, the Mr. Gray person. I have a strong suspicion based on absolutely nothing besides that person misspeaking and addressing its, his companion or I guess the other side of the conversation as Mr. Duh. But I think it's Hudero. He has been showing up way too many times in all the books, and there's no reason for him to not be more prominent, even though we have not actually encountered him yet. So uh, here are my thoughts. They could be <laughs> me pulling, you know, ideas out of my butt as always, but they could be onto something. We'll see. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider giving me a like and subscribing, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.